Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. And especially to those of you tuned into this service on the World Wide Web. I want to thank Vance for the guided meditation and the treatment of oneness by our practitioner, Carol Campbell, thank you, that set the tone for this remainder of the service. And truly, it is a joy to be sharing with you once again from the podium in this capacity. You may recall, friends, that last October, um, I journeyed to Las Vegas to attend the second annual practitioner gathering called Connect and Celebrate. This was held from October 5th to 7th at the Westin Lakes Las Vegas Resort and Spa. It had been announced that I would share with you highlights of this event. And of course, most of you or all of you should know that on my return, I had my mishap where I fell down, broke my ankle, and was unable to share the Las Vegas story. And so Carol graciously stepped in that practitioner Sunday also in October for me. So thanks again, Carol. But that experience of a broken ankle has had so many lessons for me. And that is a whole other talk in and of itself. However, let me share with you a brief overview of the conference, which ran from Thursday afternoon with the welcome cocktails and opening ceremony through Saturday afternoon. And Sunday was a return travel day or for visiting one of CSL's, CSL churches in the area. The Friday and Saturday had a mix of various topics, um, which included interactions with members of the Leadership Council through a panel discussion in which they covered various topics such as roles for practitioners, which now include chaplaincy, um, to topics on joy, spontaneous joy, a workshop on effective prayer, as well as taking it out to the world, ways in which we are using this teaching in our communities. Each day began with a half hour guided meditation, and that set the tone for the day. On Friday night, we had a celebration talent show, and that proved to be quite entertaining. We also welcomed 15 newly licensed practitioners at that meeting, and it was a good opportunity to see practitioners from all across the United States and Canada. Of course, as usual, Jamaica was the highlight of the conference, given the fact that I had traveled so far to come and participate, far is relative as far as I'm concerned. It was a worthwhile trip. And since I also had time to do my own sightseeing tours and have fun enjoying the property, it was a beautiful resort and spa. But most importantly, the, what, that we were all there as CSL to bring a consciousness of love and healing. You see, friends, the consciousness was right on the heels of the shootings in Las Vegas. It was being in the right place at the right time with the right consciousness to see God in everything and in every situation. And that brief recap of the trip leads me to today's talk which I have entitled, The Three Ps for Daily Living. This as a result of this Las Vegas visit. Those of you who are trained in marketing know that they teach you about the four Ps, product, price, place, and promotion. But the three Ps to which I am referring is as follows. Persistently, practicing, the presence of God. This talk was delivered by practitioner Tracy Brown, chair of the Leadership Council. And she was our guest speaker last year at the temple's 36th anniversary celebration. Friends, this talk stood out for me as it was a call to remind us of who we are being on a daily basis. And I want to spend some time today examining this idea and exploring what this means to us here in present day Jamaica. How many of you were in attendance last week when Reverend John gave his encouragement on 
it's time for a new conversation. Anybody, show of hands? Quite a few. In his talk, he also mentioned that it is our individual and collective consciousness which will change the world. And friends, Dr. Ernest Holmes, our founder of this great teaching, The Science of Mind, in his address to one of his early practitioner classes, informed the participants that, and I quote, the one who is most able to persistently practice the presence of God will be able to do the most with our teaching, end of quote. In other words, we should grow into the understanding that the spirit responds to us and become more aware of its presence within us. Dr. Holmes describes this presence as, and I quote, the very breath of our breath, the imagination back of our words. It is the creative power in our thought and the law and energy that executes that thought. End of that quote. One of our fundamental principles of our teaching, and which is written in the inside back cover of our order of service states, there is a power for good in the universe greater than that, greater than you are and you can use it. This presence is always here with us and we can use it. Our job is to practice being in it and being it. In practicing the presence, there is a conscious and continuous attempt to feel the divine presence in and through everything and everyone while consciously sustaining an interior awareness of God. This, friends, is what Jesus, the master teacher, said in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 6 of the New King James Version reads, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways Acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. End of that reading. When we are in tune with the presence within, we are guided as to what we need to do and when we need to do it. Scripture also tells us that of my own self, I can do nothing. It is the Father within that doeth the work. John chapter 5, verse 19. It is so important, therefore, that at all times we give our attention to the power and presence within. But to do this, we must be persistent. And what exactly do we mean by persistence? Dictionary.com, a favorite resource of one of our practitioners, defines persistence as the act of continuing in an opinion or course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. It is determination, resoluteness, or staying power even in the face of opposition. So having established what it means to be persistent, let me share with you a true story of Dajrat Manji, the man who carved a path through a mountain for his village in India by sheer persistence. For years, he was called a madman for toiling away at the rocks. But Dajraj Manji was not mad. His quest to break a path through a small mountain to benefit the entire village is now legendary because he carved an entire road with his hand tools working for 22 years. He started this extraordinary task in 1960, after his wife was injured while trekking up the side of one of these rocky footpaths. To reach the nearest hospital, he had to travel around the mountains, some 70 kilometers. She died as they were not able to reach on time to save her. Manji wanted his people to have easier access to doctors, hospitals, schools and opportunities. So armed with only a chisel, hammer and crowbar, 
he single-handedly started carving a road through the 300-foot mountain that isolated his village from the nearest town. From 1960 to 1982, Manji picked at the mountain until he eventually created a 360-foot long, 25-foot deep road. This new path cut the trip from his village to the hospital from 44 miles to nine miles. After 22 years, Dajrat Manji, the common man, had broken the mountains. And persons from 60 villages in Gaylor, his own hometown, could now have access to doctors and hospitals. This, friends, is what we call the essence of persistence. And that's interesting. I have a plaque on my desk at work which describes what the essence of persistence is. And it says, the power to shape the future is earned through persistence. No other quality is as essential to success. It is the sandpaper that breaks down all resistance and sweeps away obstacles. It is the ability to move mountains one grain of sand at a time. End of that quote. And while this is a demonstration in the physical form, the human experience is part of the divine design. So can you imagine what more we can do if we are continuously in tune with the power within? In persistently practicing the presence of God, we must recognize that this means to awaken the Christ consciousness within us. A recognition of our union with spirit, our divine sonship. It is especially important when we have things turning up in our lives which are not in alignment with the good we wish to see and experience. That we can feel this connection in our hearts and make conscious contact with the indwelling God. Friends, in making the connection, we are affecting the world in which we live, move and have our being, as well as we are affecting each other. And in our words of wisdom section, also in our order of service, I came across this quote um, by Dr. Edward Villogen, and it states, most of us want to make a difference and leave a positive impression. We want to contribute something worthwhile and valuable. Perhaps we don't realize that we are already doing so, but every time we choose love over fear or forgiveness instead of resentment, we create ripples of goodness in that, in my opinion, affects everyone on the planet." End of his quote. Can you therefore see how important it is that we are mindful of our inner dialogue? And I know that as we go about the day daily, we get ourselves challenged to keep consistent with that dialogue. We see it even in the driving, maybe even on our way to church. I think I knew I was delivering this talk, had that experience driving. Just, it's just before I picked up Vance this morning. But then, if we truly are in tune with the presence, we would know that we keep ourselves centered even in the face of such situations of the driving on the roads and whatever else there is that we hear about us every day. So in an article in our Science of Mind magazine a couple of years back entitled Transforming the World from Inside Out, Eugene Holden did an interview with Sri Ravi Shankar who is founder of the Art of Living Foundation, and whose, the, that foundation's purpose is to assist people in eliminating stress and to foster well-being. The foundation has a presence in more than 150 countries around the world. And this man of peace and harmony and balance, as described by Holden, states that this whole teaching is about something is about, sorry, connecting with the divine within oneself 
that allows one to become the clear, open channel for spirit to express in the most beautiful and powerful way. He goes on further to state that in order to transform anything in our lives, we must become willing to transform our lives from the inside out. And this, friends, takes commitment and dedication. So in our commitment to be persistently practicing the presence of God, we must be true to our spiritual practices, knowing that God is in all, over all, and through all. So how many of us have a spiritual practice to which we commit daily? For me, it's prayer and meditation. And I would like for us to look closer at what these spiritual practices involves. And as I mentioned, one of the first spiritual practices we can undertake is prayer. And I know we all do that daily. But prayer is, is through silent contemplation of the divine presence, ever stimulating the thought and the universal law of mind ever acting. Prayer is the act of becoming still and knowing that God, the creative wisdom and power is moving in, upon, and through our affairs. To be persistent in prayer is to continue treating and praying until consciousness is changed. And from which change there inevitably follows a demonstration. And secondly, meditation. It says take 20 to 25 minutes a day to cultivate the practice of becoming still enough to allow the sacred voice of the divine within to guide and direct our lives. Meditation is done to achieve such a state of stillness that the awareness of God's presence permeates us. The secret of meditation is silence. No repetitions, no affirmations, no denials. Just the acknowledgments of God's allness and then the deep, deep silence which announces God's presence. We can also participate in sacred service as a spiritual practice. And what this means is to be the expression of the divine in service to others. That means in whatever we do, we do it as unto God. However we show up, we are in service to the divine presence within and within the persons whom we serve. So if our job is to make the coffee, let us make the best coffee there is and do it with love. Another spiritual practice is that of using affirmations. And we can use affirmations to help us in creating the connection to the divine presence. And here's one such affirmation which you may be familiar with. I will say it once and you can repeat after me. And we'll get a little rhythm going here. There is only one life that life is God life, that life is perfect, that life is my life now. Repeat after me together. There is only one life, that life is God life, that life is perfect, that life is my life now. And we repeat, there is only one life, that life is God life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. And let's build a little rhythm. There's only one life. That life is God life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's, there's only one life. I'm trying to get you in the rhythm. That life is God life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. And let's say it like we mean that. There's only one life. That life is God life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. 
And if you believe it, and so it is. Friends, or you can create your own practice. Perhaps you may practice yoga, or tai chi, or walking the labyrinth. All of these can be used as a spiritual practice in order to be in communion with the divine presence. Joel Goldsmith, in his book, Practicing the Presence, reminds us that the student of spiritual wisdom cannot go through his day satisfied that he has read some truth in the morning or that he's going to hear some truth in the afternoon or evening. There must be conscious activity of truth going on all the time. That does not mean that we neglect our human duties and activities. It means that we train ourselves to have some area in consciousness always active in truth. Whether we look out at the forms of nature, such as trees, flowers, or ocean, or whether we are meeting people and we see God in them, we find some measure of God in every experience. Friends, this means that we must train ourselves to behold the presence and activity of God in everything and in everything we do and in everyone, keeping the high watch. We can indeed change the world around us if we are persistently practicing the presence of God. And so, I am not giving the assignment, but we know what we need to do this week, right? That we will practice the present persistently because we know that God is always here to support us. And so, in the words of our founding minister, Dr. Elmer Lumsden, here ended the lesson and now begins the practice. Namaste.